You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back. We have commenced our broadcast week here once again on the Options Insider Radio Network with your bi-weekly options extravaganza known as the old OB. Hope you all had a great weekend out there. Fun, happy, hopefully safe weekend out there these days. My name, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com. As well as, of course, from the ever-exciting network upon which so many of you are binging these days. If you folks hang out in the on-demand side, hey, we like you all out there. Remember, if you just listen to the option block, You're missing a legion of other shows, so make sure wherever you're getting this stuff on demand, you've upgraded to the full network. That'll get you nearly a dozen shows covering all aspects of the options market. If you like what you hear, leave a review on whatever platform you get. It could be on this show, could be on the full network, or if you get our mobile app, could be on the app store. Wherever you get the content, leave a review does help the legion of new folks. Maybe we need to run that poll again. It's been a little while since we ran that poll. When did you start trading options? The last time we did it. Over 30% of you said in the last three months. So there's a lot of newcomers coming these days, listeners. So if you like what you hear on the on-demand side, do keep rating and reviewing. It does help the new folks discover the content. Of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you want to get exclusive pro Q&As, you want to get exclusive options oddities, you want to get exclusive giveaways, and hey, maybe you want to join us live for this show and everything else we do throughout the week. Pester our co-hosts, our guests to no end with your questions. You know where to go. Theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. Shh, it's a secret. Just me and you talking. And of course, we have to kick off our week here. The only way that we can now, the only way that is possible, the way that so many of you, except for that one guy who wrote in, except for that one guy, he could skip ahead a few minutes. Everybody else loves it. It is time to guess that 80s wrestler. You know, when I was thinking, who haven't we done yet? I was kind of surprised we haven't done these folks. They were kind of a decent name in the 80s tag team division i will give you that clue they are hall of famers now inducted i believe back oh in 2015 or so so these are hall of famers somehow i don't believe we've ever featured them if we have it's been a long time maybe in the earliest days of this segment so i challenge you listeners can you name these 80s tag team wrestlers for over 50 years the revolutionary force in sports entertainment
<laughs> All right. Keeps going for a while. I think you get the gist of it. It's a fun one. Kind of a silly tag team, but it was a pretty popular one when they came out. Let's go in order. Let's first, we're mixing it up today because we are not joined by the greasiest meatballs. No, we are joined by the rockingest of lobsters, a rare Monday appearance for Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Now, we know in the past, 80s wrestling, not exactly his area of expertise. So we'll give him first crack at this one. Let him guess. I'll give him two guesses because why not? I'm generous. Mr. Rock Lobster, A, welcome back to the program. And B, just name some 80s tag teams. Maybe you'll get lucky. I'll give you three guesses. 80s tag team wrestlers? Uh, um, um, no idea. No, I, I don't even, I couldn't even name one tag team <laughs> Ah, yes. The segment that was designed for the Rock Lobster there. Just say something. Say like the Heart Foundation. You'll sound good. I, go. I was going to say uh, there's like there's Hall and Oates. Hall there's Oates. Captain and Tennille. <laughs> and uh, the Mamas and the Papas. <laughs> like, I, <don't> <laughs> I would love to see Hall and Oates in the ring. And maybe that the mama of the mama and the papas might have kicked some butt as a, as a wrestler. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, sir, those are not tag teams <laughs> from the 80s. <laughs> All right. So uh, the Rock Lobster is on record guessing hollow notes and the mamas and the papas. <laughs> Let's now move over to the quiet hinterlands of Chicago, where not exactly an Uncle Mike type of day. But you know what? It always brightens his day when he gets to guess. Some 80s wrestlers, Mr. Uncle Mike from St. Charles Wealth Management. Can you name this silly 80s tag team? I can, but I, I'm still reeling over. Uh, of, the, of Andrew's three guesses, only one of them is even 80s, because this is <laughs> Captain and Tennille and Mom. Yeah, that's, and that's like 70s. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving him a pass on that. <laughs> Captain and Tennille, geez, wow. That's, uh, that's in the dark mist of time, even for me, sir. But uh, yes, good good stuff. <laughs> All right. So since Mark didn't give a hit today, this one's going to be kind of a flyer for me today on my guess. But I'm going to go with the Bushwhackers. Yes, of course. Of course. You know, everyone thinks of a uh, hacksaw with the hoe, but the Bushwhackers would also go, ho. Oh. so it was kind of a, a twofer. I remember when I went to that to that event, uh, the Ultimate Warrior versus Andre, and we were walking in and my dad was with me and he had no idea anything about wrestling. And everyone's out outside of the venue just going, oh, and he's like, what the hell's wrong with these people? And I was like, Dad, it's the it's Hacksaw and it's the Bushwhackers. And I was trying to explain to him, but he did not get it at all. But yes, the Bushwhackers, these kind of Aussie New Zealand type team, very silly. They would stomp down to the ring with their weird march. They would lick a kid's head. They were kind of gross. <laughs> Couldn't do that in the COVID era, go around licking people. Uh, but yes, and they would just yell, ho, and they were kind of comedic. They, they were a pretty fun team in uh, in the 80s so yeah i'm surprised we haven't done the bushwhackers by now are you uncle mike he, he lost his mute button <laughs> i'm sorry I, just, I literally got cut off of skype i just came back i, I, <laughs> I got andrew here he's guessing captain and Tennille. i got uncle mike vanishing on me let's just keep rolling right on into the trading block it's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. I think we got our show title just two minutes into the show now. The Bushwhackers versus Captain and Tania. What do you think, huh? Does that scream options trading or what? <laughs> a, lot of heads, a lot of heads will be scratched on iTunes after seeing that. <laughs> what the hell is this show about? Let's find out as we head on into The Trading Block. This is indeed the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading out there, listeners. And, you know, we do get a wee bit of red on the screen here to kick off the week here, even though the NASDAQ is doing its darndest to erase that. In fact, as we speak, it has just ticked into the green there, listeners. Uh, so the NASDAQ's had quite the saga. It has sold off and then rallied and then sold off and then rallied again. So it's done this twice now today. So the bulls and bears in a bit of a tug of war out there. So the NASDAQ right now, Ticking up green a little bit, 0.1% on the day. So we can't really say it's a red start to the week anymore. It's more of a mixed start. Uh, S&P is still red, but it is bouncing as well. It's off about two-thirds of a point. S&P sold off harder this morning, kind of got well, got down to about 42.15. And then it bounced to did what it normally does out there. It bounced up to about 42 half. Then it sold off hard again, went right back down to the 4,200. Almost got there. I think it got to about 4,201, actually, so right down to that 4,200 level and then bounce right back to where it is 
hanging out right now, right around 42, 45 or so. So back off the lows of the day, but still off about two thirds of a percent. And the Dow also has done uh, kind of a bit of a uh, bounce happy session so far, selling off and rallying the selling off. Now it's in the middle of a rally again as well. It's still off about a third of a percent or a little over 122 handles or so. But again, it's one of those markets where wait five minutes and we'll see where we are. I wouldn't be surprised if we have turned green on a couple of indices by the end of the show, perhaps even all three. That means kicking off the show, VIX was looking a little frothy. It was north of the 30 handle, about 30 and a quarter. That puts it up eight and a half points from our last show, listeners. In the last couple of sessions, Friday in particular, we saw a lot of red on the screen. We saw Val getting pretty frothy. I think if you recall, the Rock Lobster was talking about how Val maybe looked like it was poised to make a turn to the upside on the end of our option block show. So hopefully you folks out there listened to that and positioned accordingly. Uh, VVIX coming into showtime at about a 123. It puts it up 13 points from where it was on, on not on Monday's show, on Thursday's show. VXX, again. What the hell is this product anymore? Who knows? But it's up one and a half points to about 26 and a quarter when we kicked off the show. Uh, UVXY back up again as well. Remember, it was threatening the 12 handle not too long ago. 1615. It puts it up almost three and three quarters points, about 365 uh, when we kicked off the show. Uh, SVIX, the very controversial inverse VIX product out there. 1165 down 2.4. This thing, if VIX keeps rallying, we're going to see SVIX get uh, pretty darn low pretty quick. We shall see. How low can it go? And uh, UVIX at about, excuse me, at about a 21. It's up six points. That, of course, the 2X VIX product out there. And Vol Q, aka the At The Money Vol of the NASDAQ 100, a little bit shy of 34, about 33 and three quarters when we kicked off the show. Puts it up about six and three quarters points from where it was on Thursday. So Vol mostly up. Will that hang out? Will that stay? We shall see as the show progresses. He got it right, so let's go around the horn. He did not guess Captain (laughs) Antoniel. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what is catching your eye Then I guess if you're hanging out in the NASDAQ, Uncle Mike type of day, sir? Well, as much as I'd like to learn and think and talk about Captain Antoniel today, yeah, I think that today the thing that I tweeted out earlier is that we held 4200 in the SPX, and so by doing that, uh, it, it held on to a key number. But the, the day is still young. There's a whole lot of trading left to do. We got almost three hours till the close. But the thing that's really catching my eye right now is I'm just looking at the price bars from the time our show started. We opened the show 14 minutes ago. SPX was at 42.32. We got to as low as 42.23, and now we're up to 42.46 and climbing. I mean, this is just a lot of volatility, and it just it boggles my mind that it just happened just because we talked about Captain and Tennille versus the Bushwhackers uh, with everything else that we have going on here. So uh, that's one thing that's really catching my eye is just the sheer volatility that we have in this marketplace today. Uh, speaking of volatility, uh, one thing that I am noticing is in my short put spreads that are still very far out of the money, uh, not as far as they were a little while, a couple days ago, but they're still very far out of the money, <laughs> is I'm noticing the fact that volatility is coming higher, and with it coming higher, it's making the put spread look less attractive, but the benefit of volatility coming higher is that rolling down will be easier if we get to my line of the sand, which we have not as of yet. So that's one thing that I'm seeing with where we're at at this stage is that volatility, or I'm sorry, the the VIX, implied volatility, whatever way you want to look at it, that's playing a big factor in option pricing right now. Just the fact that we were in the low 20s on Friday, and then now we're over 30. This has been a big jump. Uh, Right now, uh, we have that. Also, we have the 10-year note is rallying a little bit off the lows. Uh, Seems that, uh, at least for now, we're at somewhat of a bottom, but it seemed like we've been at bottoms for several times this year, so we will see. Um, but right now what is happening is I talked about this on the show a little bit on, for, on Thursday, is that when everything is going in the same direction, money either has to disappear from somewhere if it's going higher or it has to appear somewhere if it's going lower. And so far today, it's appeared in the 10-year note, at least from what I'm seeing, because we have a little bit of a rally on that today. Uh, silver is actually down over 2% on the day. So looking at SLV, we're below the 22 handle again. And then with the futures, uh, just or I'm sorry, with commodities, 
Looking at oil, we're back below the 100 mark again, but we're still high, relatively speaking, to where we've been. Uh, then uh, it's kind of a dull day. I guess Bitcoin isn't moving that much. So we have a lot happening right now. And you can't say this is a boring market, that's for sure. No, when uh, VIX is north of 30, usually things tend not to be boring. We, we get over 25. Here we get our guest star, Mr. Loggins. He joined us again on Friday's show. So over 30, we may need a super special guest star. We shall see. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, you missed our special guest star on Friday's Vol Views. So what are you and Vol, man? What do you make of this uh, this new regime back over 30? What do you make of these markets, sir? Bouncing all over the place. Uh, who'd you have on Vol Views? Kenny Loggins, of course. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> he is the special oh. guest star when we get to the danger zone how, how can i not know that how, how can i not know i'm that? stunned both uh, you and mark did not know who the special guest star was i was like have you guys not been paying attention oh uh, yes uh our audience um, does they ask for him even when vix is like 17 18 they're like where's kenny Loggins? so they like him. Like uh, yeah, no, it, so yeah vix is th- i mean because we did have kind of i i could have sworn we were just trading 4500 spx yeah just like a day or actually two I, I sold some 450 calendar. Oh, my gosh. So I think, what was it, Thursday, probably my no- most annoying trading day of the year. The good part was, so we were rallying, and I I think we hit 450 SPY. I closed some call calendars at the 450 strike, and I was left with a, a 440 put uh, that I owned for, uh, I don't know, probably a couple of bucks after I sold all the calls. For it. Anyway, but, you know, as the market was tanking, I was pushing up. Uh, stops in my put and i'm like if i keep pushing this up they're gonna i'm gonna add fished eventually anyway i thought like oh no way they're gonna fish me for 50 cents sure enough um i think my put traded four dollars and 40 cents that was the low tick for the next three days (laughs) and then of course they're trading 20 dollars so um as from a vault point of view um still made money but it would have been nice to make you know more money but anyway, from a vault. <laughs> Wise words. It would have been nice to make more money, says yeah, the Yeah, I wanted to hold the put, which is the worst. That could be the so. subtitle of our show. It would have been nice yeah. to make more money. If you if you wanna if you wanna hold a put, don't put a stop anywhere close to where the market is. Because I I just have a feeling that they just they're too good at grab being able to uh to grab orders. But anyway, um from a vol point of view, I would say um so you look at the you look at the intraday range today, and it, I guess it's it's healthy, but it feels. Uh, I, I think it's like again the market gets stretched, right? So VIX is trading thirty, and we're probably down two hundred fifty points in SPX in what two days since Thursday. Uh, so that's three three trading days. Uh, so that's almost five percent. So VIX kind of is pricing, you know. And what we were, I think we were talking about this last week, you know, vol goes higher when both sides of the market move are kind of in play, in my view, just like when I was a trader, right? So the worst thing you could do is sell a bunch of puts when you're a trader, a uh, floor trader, and, you know, you head to a stock and then the stock just launches, right? Because you sell the puts and you're like, woohoo, I sell the puts. But if you're if you're hedging, and remember for everybody that's like listening, you have to put your like the floor trader hat on. So if they sell puts and then sell stock, and this, everything starts to rip to the other side, you know they're essentially short strangles or short straddles or some kind of synthetic combination like that. So as we're ripping, the short stock is killing them that they used as a hedge, but their puts really don't go down, right? So the the vol the delta on the put basically gets sticky, like it doesn't change. So uh, stock up more, delta's not changing on the put. Like you would think the delta of the put would go down as the stock would go up, but not if the volatility keeps expanding. So um, you get stuck with that. So, and I think that's, so right now what's happening is the, the fact that we could bounce and the Fed might not be as aggressive and whatever the heck and all of these scenarios that are going around in the world and the Japanese, Chinese lockdowns are terrible. Um, actually, I'm getting pictures from some of my, Students like, you know, like, yeah, they're basically walling places off with green fence. Um, they can't get out. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, either the Chinese know something I don't or they have some bureaucrats that are leaning on a policy that doesn't seem to work very well. 
Um, but you have all of these, you know, big under undertones. So like what set the market off falling apart from three days ago is kind of unclear relative to the amount of information we had. Um, so again, like more worries, more lockdown worries, all kinds of stuff like that. But I don't think that the amount of known information has changed considerably in the last week. So yeah, like part of me says that high vol is kind of pricing the upside a little bit. So when I get off this call, I'm going to look at skew have in meetings all day pretty much. Um, uh, but that's kind of how I look at this. So yeah, zone zone four, we're 30 VIX. Um, as far as I can tell, we really haven't had a, you know, a period of time where vol has gone down in three days. Um, so until that happens, I'm like, hey, vol's going up and it, and it hasn't stopped. Um, it is, it looks like it is softening a little bit from, um, uh, from the highs today, but I, I don't think it, I don't think it's going to do a whole lot, especially when we just had a 250 point move SPX. Like, so the 30 day straddle, where do you value that 30 day straddle? Right. Uh, let's see where it is right now in SPX, probably closer to 325 or 50 bucks right now, I would guess. Right. So if we go to the, I'm going to May 27. Yeah, the straddle's 260. Actually, 260, which is less than I thought it would be. Um, I thought it. What did I say? 250, 260, something like. Yeah, because we just had a 250 point move. So here's the thing: we just had a 250 point move in three days, and they're pricing the 30 day straddle at 260 at a 30 ball. So that gives you a little idea, right? If, if, if they're thinking we're gonna make a run back up, it's hard you know, for the vault to get a lot lower than a 30 ball at this point. So um, they're, pricing in, they're pricing in the move. So we'll, we'll see, it'll t probably take a while for VIX to start to come down a little bit. You don't have the, I guess the Fed, the FOMC, what is it, the 4th of May, You know, they have their meeting and they're gonna release some um, news or whatever. So again, you got all those things. VIX is high for a reason because also the potential bounce now is fairly big. It's 250 points. So um, it's just back to where we were on Thursday, and that's how you get. Uh, that's how you. That's how you invoke Kenny Laws at the Loggins as the perennial special guest on uh, the Option Board. Yes, the perennial special guest that is Mr. Loggins. Our chat's talking about. Working nickel bids for main 19 puts and VIX, Mr. Rock Lops. You like those? You on board? You scooping all those bad boys? Um, 19, I, I guess if you, those, those could work. Um, I, I do like the idea of the 20, like the 21s for a quarter, too. Um, the 19s might trade a nickel. I think what do they trade as high as what, 50 cents or 35 cents um, last week? So that you can, you might you might be able to get something there. That's not a that's definitely not a terrible. Yeah, they traded they trade a high of forty cents. So you, you got there's there uh, let's see they, you got potential. Uh, we had that big vol swoon and this was with more time to go. So on the first they were sixty seventy. Yeah, you got there's definitely could have some could have some life in them. So and and you, and, and you have almost two weeks after the Fed kind of talk so there would be time for the vault to subside so yeah if you could buy uh, buy those for a nickel yeah that could be a great idea or the 20s for a dime buy half as many <laughs> <laughs> yeah because uh, the 19s have traded a whopping 49 today and the 20s yeah. have traded nearly 10,000 so you got a better you're not shot find a lot of nickel yeah sellers. you're not gonna get a lot of nickel sellers unfortunately as cool as it would be so you might be stuck with the 20s for a dime Is that too rich for your blood listeners i don't know but 10,000 folks have have traded those looks like they got as high yeah, as the seven, 20, they yeah, got as the high 20, as 20 cents today yeah those things uh wow. the 21 puts traded to size a dollar 30 on like wednesday of last week so you know just just fix getting to 20 which in the old days was a pretty high number um only in the middle of zone three um but right now 20 looks like about a million miles away for ball which is in my view generally the best time you start shopping for some of these junk puts by the way um when this just looks like, you know, like when 20 looks like it could be like, no way we ever get there again. Um, that's pretty much when you should start looking at it. But All right, you guys, not, not you, investment advice, just the blatherings of an old you, guy. You chatters talk me into I'm working a dime bid for those uh, those 20 puts. We'll see if I get filled.
by the end of the trade, by the end of the show. I shall, I shall let you know. There's 32,000 others bid with me. I'm thinking maybe not, but uh, we shall see as we keep on rolling. Let's see what's afoot out there. Speaking of VIX options, there is a whole heck of a lot of paper on the tape today. It's like VIX is, is doing three days worth of living right now. I'm coming into this mo- portion of the show here. We're already at 464,000 contracts right now. Listen, that's, that's a lot for VIX. The ADV has just fallen off a cliff. It's down to 453. So we have already, by this portion of the show, already surpassed the ADV and VIX out there right now. So things are clearly afoot. All this bounce in action, all this downside to start the day. Then are we going to rally? Oh, no, right back down again. Oh, here we go. We're rallying again. Now, you know, all that action is driving a ton of paper in the broad indices. Uh, Spy, same deal. Spy already pretty much at his ADB as well. It's at five and a half million contracts right now. The ADB is about 5.8. So VIX has already surpassed its ADB. Spy is right there. Uh, the S, similar story. One and a half million contracts already up in the S. That's a lot. That's double than what we might see on a normal day out there at this time of day. So things are afoot in the major indices. The S, ADB, almost 1.7, about 1.67 million. So it does seem like we're going to hit it out there as well. Small caps, not to be forgotten. IWM, 708,000 contracts on the tape. So it seems like the ADB in all these products is going back north, listeners, because that ADB in IWM has fallen to 671,000 contracts as well. So a lot of paper on the tape in the major indices different story in the single names which is always kind of interesting to see out there as much paper as vix and spy are doing single names are kind of like eh, the top of the list doing a lot the bottom of the list not so much number 10 today ford it only cost you 167,000 contracts to break into our top 10 today i bet you that's probably surprising to you if you've been listening to this show for a while because things are moving things are afoot out there but in the single names It's kind of almost too frothy for a lot of these names out there to do a lot of paper. Uh, Ford, again, only 167,000 contracts. Ford getting into a 14 handle again today. Let's see how low did we get in Ford. Looks like 1468 was the low for the day out here in Ford. So you haven't seen a 14 handle in Ford in quite some time. Let's see. We got to go back. Oh, all the way. Obviously, before August and October was trading 15 and a half. So we got to go back out quite a ways to find a 14 handle in Ford, listeners. Uh, Let's go a little far. There we go. Yeah, we have to go all the way back to pretty much, yeah, early October. He had a 14 handle then. That's when it really began that next leg up, that meme run that kind of capped out at about, looks like about 2587, so almost 26. If you've been a pro member, you've been listening to oddities during that time, you know, we were talking about going into August expiration and September, folks loading up on the 22s, the 25s, the 30s, the verticals, and Ford. Uh, All that seems like a distant memory now. Ford, again, right at the 15 handle right now, just crossing back into it. Good for only 167,000 contracts today, but that's enough to break into the top 10. Number nine, we jump up a little bit more to Microsoft, 215,000. What's going on out there in the land of softy outside of drama, viral drama with Bill Gates? Uh, 277 and three quarters, up about a one and a third percent today. So bucking the trend out there in softy good for 215,000 contracts bank of america one of one half of the former the old school symbol twins before the meme rampage took over that's number eight bank of america 247,000 contracts on the tape for there so they're off about three quarters of a point about almost two percent trading around 36.85 right now good for right around a quarter of a million contracts number seven it's facebook it's a day that ends in y facebook is hanging out out there let's see how low did facebook get in in their nader uh, 182 looks like in about a quarter was was pretty much the low for them. And that's pretty much the low recently out there as well. Still hanging out pretty close to that 184 and change right now. But even though they're flirting with unched on the day right now, Facebook good for about 270,000 contracts. Number six, Netflix. Man, did this name leave a lot of wreckage in its wake. They don't call it the Widowmaker for nothing. Uh, 206 and a half right now, off another four and a quarter percent or over nine handles today. Unlike everything else in the market, it's pretty much hanging out close to its low for the day still right now. So Netflix just, I think the technical term is getting annihilated. It was trading 350 not that long ago, listeners. So man, this thing, they have come for this thing en masse out here. Good for 273,000 contracts. Number five, AMD, perennial top tenor. Today, number five, 313,000. Actually bucking the trend as well, up about one and a half percent or a buck 30. 
trading a little bit shy of 90 bucks right now. Number four, you know it's always hanging out right behind it. It's NVIDIA. NVIDIA, 355,000 contracts. It's off about a third of a point today. Trading a little bit shy of 195 for NVIDIA. It's like they sold off in the morning down to 191.30 before rallying back up. Well, they rallied all the way up to 197.68 today and then sold right back down to 192.67 before rallying again to 196, before selling off again to 193.5 and, and back up again. So NVIDIA has done a lot of living today. That, that probably accounts for that 355,000 contracts. Number three, yes, I said number three, it's Tesla. 572,000 contracts on the tape. You know, who really cares about Tesla anymore? I mean, everyone's got another teen named Musk drama to obsess over, so they're all looking at that. Spoilers for what our number one slot might be today. Uh, Tesla off about eight and a third handles, almost 1%, right around 995 right now. So still shy of the 1,000 handle, even though it looks like it might be trying to break back. It got back over it ever so briefly today, 108 almost it got to before giving all that up again. Started off the day down at 978, so it's had... A little bit of a range out there as well. Number two, it's the fruit company, a.k.a. Apple. A sleepy 734,000 contracts. That's not much for Apple. It's off about almost two points today, a little over 1%, trading right around 160, 159 and change right now. Got as low as 158 and about a half, it seems like, today. And this one's also done the dance. Opened at 161, sold off to 159, then got back up to looks like 161 and a half before selling off again to 158 and a half, then back up to 160 and a half. So all these names have done a lot of living already by this point in the show, listeners. So uh, action-packed day, but you know what's taking the top spot today. It's that other T-named Musk drama, aka Twitter. Seems like we have a the bid is confirmed. Maybe maybe Twitter is going to accept this thing. So Twitter popping again off that news. Trading right around 51 and a half right now, up about two and a half bucks. Started the day right around 51. It's kind of been hanging out in this range. Looks like the low it got for the day was about 50 and a third. It rallied briefly a little while ago up to 52 and change before giving that back up. So hanging right around 51 and a half bucks right now. Good for 1.05 million contracts on the tape today. So Twitter taking the top spot. We got some hot earnings action for you this week as well, listeners. Today, we got Coke. We got Activision Blizzard. What's going on with them with all that merger drama? Otis Elevator is my old Connecticut stomping grounds. Phillips, Tuesday, we got UPS, GE, PepsiCo, 3M, JetBlue, Mike Tyson's favorite airline, Waste Management, Softy, Google, Visa, GM, and Chipotle. Wednesday, Boeing, Spotify, T-Mobile, Facebook, PayPal, Ford, Qualcomm, and Pinterest. Thursday, Twitter, Southwest, Nokia, Caterpillar, MasterCard, McDonald's, Merck, Lily, Apple, Amazon, Roku, Intel, Robinhood, and Gilead. <gasps> Friday, we got Exxon, Mobile, Chevron, AstraZeneca, Philips, and Honeywell. So quite frankly, if there's you can't find a name you're interested in this week, you're, you're just not trading because there is something for everyone on the docket this week. This is a big week, listeners. And... In keeping with that big week theme, we got hot off the presses from our friends over there at Orat. Some hot new earnings move, earnings move results, earnings season, and earnings trades reports right for you folks in your hot little hands right now. Let's kick off with some of the ones popping off before the bell. Activision, man, there's been a lot of drama around this one. The whole Microsoft deal, all the ongoing stuff that's been going on with Activision Blizzard and their CEO and the, the lawsuits and everything against that company. Then, of course, the insider trading this is one that just won't quit from a drama perspective. They're popping off before the bell. 78.61. They were pricing in 1.9%. They delivered about 1.1%. Again, it's a name that's kind of tied into a corporate action now. So you expect some of that ball to be a bit muted. That's pretty much what we saw. Otis Elevators before the bell. How much vol is there in elevators? Let's find out. 73.42 is where they were trading going into their announcement this morning. They were pricing in listeners 4.6%. They delivered a whopping 0.4%. Holy goodness. I think is the technical term. Wow, that's a lot of just no vol. <laughs> that's like the early days of the pandemic where you could say whatever the hell you wanted and it translated into nothing from a vol perspective. So wow, if you had short premium out there, hopefully you covered it pretty quickly. Who knows if it's going to be hanging out there for long, but my goodness, that is a whole heck of a lot of vol on the tape. Listeners, Oh, and then we got our old friend, Mr. Buffett's favorite, Coca-Cola. How much Coke ball was there before the bell? Let's find out. 65 and a quarter is where they were trading going into their announcements. They were pricing in 2.8%. And oh my goodness, they're still at 65 and a quarter. <laughs> they are literally unched. 
<laughs> they haven't moved a penny from the going into their announcement. Oh my goodness. That is two. The last two we talked about listeners, 92 and 98% underperformance. <laughs> Oh, wow. Are we going back into that mode, listeners? I actually kind of hope not, because that's that's kind of scary. That, to me, is reminiscent of, of the early days of the pandemic, and I don't know if anyone needs that anymore. But, man, that is, wow, that's a whole lot of nothing from an earnings wall perspective. Uh, let's go out a little bit farther, listeners. We have a ton, a literal metric ton. If you try to pick it up, it will crush you. A metric ton of earnings result earnings reports, I should say, coming up for this week for you. So if you can't find your tickers you're interested in over there at theoptionsinsider.com, you're just not tried and hard enough here. Let's go to GE. They're on 26 before the bell. 89 bucks is where they were trading. They're pricing in 510. In the past, they've moved 383. So whole heck of a lot of extra juice in GE. Is that merited? Our last two, t- two names might say no, but again, those are probably a little bit of aberrant scenarios. JetBlue, all this Tyson vol. Let's see what's going on there. 26 before the bell. 1287 is where it was trading. They're pricing in 86 cents. In the past, they moved 44. So Tyson adding maybe a little bit of extra juice <laughs> to good old, good old Jet Blue. Let's go to UBS out there, listeners. On the 26th after the bell as well. They were pricing in 17, or actually at 17 and a quarter. They're pricing in a buck. In the past, they've moved 58 cents. So a little bit of extra juice out there let's go let's see we've got the old googs and the goog l 26 after the bell they're both at about 23.92 as of this announcement they're pricing in about 177 dollars each in the past they've moved uh, the goog has moved 108 and a half the goog l has moved one about 114 so both of them pricing in a whole heck of a lot of extra juice microsoft let's see what's going on wow a lot of juice here 274 even they're popping off 26 after the bell as well they're pricing in about $15.40. In the past, they've moved six and a half bucks. Man, that is a lot of extra juice. Seems like someone perhaps is expecting another, another shoe to drop out of this Microsoft announcement. Wow, that's a lot of juice. I need to take another look at Softy here. Uh, Boeing, our friends across the street, 27th before the bell. 177 is where they were trading. They're pricing in nine and a half bucks. In the past, they've moved five and a half. So, yeah, a lot of extra juice out there in Boeing as well. My goodness. Uh, let's go to our old friend CME because why not? 27th before the bell. They're priced, they're at 223. Uh, they're pricing in eight and a third in the past. They've moved 487. Wow. A lot of juice on the, on the docket there for CME as well. Interesting. Man, this is shaping up to be a very interesting season. If you don't pay attention to earnings, listeners, you probably want to start this cycle because things are looking kind of crazy out there just look at the two names we reported for this morning (laughs) literally unched on coke i can't i don't think we've ever seen that on any of our reports so uh, crazy times are afoot right now we have 100 names reporting for week one and they're coming in at a whopping 62 percent on the season listeners if you want to check all that out for yourselves as well as the earnings trades let's see we've oh my goodness we have a ton of earnings trades for you folks i can't even read them all off here uh, a bunch of names in there, listeners, for you guys to check out. We got looks like one, two, three, four short straddles and a whole bunch of long calendars for you guys to sink your teeth into and a bunch of different names. Check out that earnings trades report while you're at it as well. Theoptionsinsider.com. Speaking of trades, we got to get on going. It is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. everybody let's get right to it let us unleash the eye of sauron see what it fixes its fiery gaze upon today going back out to juniper networks haven't talked about this name in quite some time ticker symbol jnpr trading right now 3370 off a buck and a half or nearly actually a little over four percent right now so a rough day for juniper networks one of the many names dragging down the major indices a year ago was trading 25 and a quarter so we're a wee bit north of that right now it's been pretty much mostly straight up for them Outside of a little bit of a dalliance to the dark side, the beginning of the year, they sold off from about 35 bucks down to 31. 
but then they rallied up after that in March to their high for the year of 38.14. And then it looks like they sold off again into early April down to 34 and a quarter before rallying again up to 36 and a half. That was on April 20th. And then they've been selling off pretty much ever since right down to where they are right now, 33.69. So it's been kind of a long upward trajectory for Juniper with the exception of the past few weeks where it's kind of been having a little bit of trouble. It seems losing a little bit of that head of steam. Let's see what our eye of Sauron found. It was a whole bunch of puts, looks like, Mr. Rock Lobster. In particular, what first caught our eye was a 5,000 lot of the April expiring this week. So the 29th, these are the weeklies, 33 puts. These are pretty much near out-of-the-money puts. Going up for 95 cents. This market was pretty wide. It was 70 cents at a buck oh five. It does look like they were buying these. They paid a 103 vol, if you are curious, listeners. Looks like then we sent the Eye of Sauron back to dig a little bit deeper, and it found some earlier prints about 15 minutes earlier. These puts traded for 70 cents when they were 65 cents at 70. Obviously, they lifted the offer, and they started to uh, to move that market, shall we say, because then we saw them printing a little bit later for 75 cents when they were 60 at 75. So this is the infamous how are they now that used to put chills down the spines of every market maker. This guy bought them for 70 2,214 times said, how are they now? And everybody went ice cold. He bought another 1,000 for 75 cents. He came back and said, how are they now? And he bought 5,000 more for 95 cents. So uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, we've been there. We've all been there. It's a painful experience when you get run over like that. Total of 10,000 this guy gobbled up of these weekly April 33 puts. What say you, sir? And do you still have flashbacks like a Vietnam vet when I say, how are they now, sir? I have to say there, there's a little bit of that. You a get little, little, little bit of like the, the, the tingle. Yes, the hair on the, the back of your neck stand up. You're like, whoa, yes, oh yes. no, what did I just step into? Like, oh, <laughs> this is going to not be a great day. Um, so Juniper is down a little bit. Uh, they made a nice purchase there. Uh, and those puts are now trading 115, and it does not appear that they have really exited them. So by every metric that we have, <laughs> these puts are a, a very good purchase. So the big question is, is what are they going to do with them? Um, and I think for Juniper, which is kind of interesting, they got oh, they got earnings are after the close tomorrow. So pretty interesting. If past is prologue, um, they will do nothing with these. They will move five dollars in their favor, and they will do nothing, sir. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and they just watch them go in the money. So I, this is a uh, this is a, a, again a surprising one. It's, it's a Juniper is kind of like it, it used to be a, the darling technology stock. What twenty years ago? Yeah, this was a dot com yeah. darling. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like the Microns and those names out there. Yes, CMGI. Yeah. Uh, I mean, now it's just it's basically just kind of a a very solid technology company trades at a low multiple and people think the earnings are going to suck, basically. So or just that tech is going to sell off today. Either one. Um, Juniper is certainly suffering from all this. I, I would say, yeah. So they're they're up money on them. I mean, the 67 cent kind uh, already are doing pretty well. I mean, the stock was just thirty seven dollars a couple, you know, a week ago. And three months ago, yeah, 30. So, I mean, this, wow, this is actually, well, I mean, it's, Juniper is down to 27 bucks. So, again, it's, I think it's just become one of those big, kind of big plotting, kind of like Cisco, you know, where it, it makes money, it sells products, but it doesn't have that, that go go aura of growth that the market loves. Well, we keep an eye on those. We'll probably know by Thursday's show whether these were a winner or not. So we may come back to these later this week. Let's also go out to, I think this might be a newcomer. I don't think we've ever talked about D before. Ticker symbol D. This is Dominion Energy, a power company out of Virginia, trading 83 and three quarters right now, off about a buck and a buck and a quarter today. On the year, let's see, it's been kind of a bit of a nothing year, up about five bucks net on the year. A year ago, it was trading 78.68. Then it kind of drifted lower, got to its low for the year, actually, on December 1st, hit $70.37. Since then, it's up about 10 bucks. It actually got up higher, got up to 88.78 on April 8th. So it's given back a fair bit, about five bucks or so, since that high on April 8th. So, yeah, recently coming under some pressure out here, Dominion, but for the most part, the year has been 
kind of hanging around sideways to slightly up. Uh, but it looks like someone, Mr. Rock Lobster, has noted this pattern and has decided to harvest a little bit of the old risk premium out here because it's like they came in this morning and dumped 5,000 of the D. That's like saying the D. The one, the one letter tickers always crack me up. D, 87 half calls. They sold them for 92 cents, so pretty much right on the bid. That is a, about a 20 vol, not a huge amount of vol. Uh, let's see. The stock was actually exactly right here when it went up, 83.63. So the stock hasn't budged, and they got nearly a buck for this overwrite. And if they get taken out, Mr. Rock Lobster, uh, they get taken out above the 52-week high, which is 88.78. So at the end of the day, you know, overwriting in these energy-type names, I don't know. I don't hate this one. It's a little bit longer than I might like to go out. But then, say la vie. What, what are your thoughts, Mr. Rock Lobster? Um, yeah, and interesting. Well, again, like buy right. And what's weird is that they sold these um, – Maybe they're thinking that's their last gas for some premium on this on this right because all the energy stocks just got really clipped. Um, you know they got bit up on this whole Russian thing and then all of a sudden nothing really happened. So um, anyway, that's what I would say there. I mean it's it's not my favorite kind of right and the yield is you know, kind of one percent ish. I guess it, I mean yeah, if it gets taken out, it would be bad. But they're probably thinking they're free money at this point if they own the stock. I would assume so. I don't love these, but I don't hate them. We've seen a lot of call overrides that are way worse than this. And this name uh, looks like it can, if it's trending lower right now, get your free buck while the getting is good out here in D. We got more to review, but we got to get going. We've been gassing on with a lot of crazy stuff on the show already today. Let's get to Uncle Mike. It is time for the strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for The Strategy Block. All right, Uncle Mike, our chat is excited. They're all fired up. They want to hear your entire strategy block about why buying nickel and dime puts in VIX is the way to go. Have at it, sir. Not exactly the direction I was planning on going today, but also was not planning on talking about Captain and Sunil versus the Bushwhackers <laughs> today either. That's why this show is magic. It takes you in so many different directions than you ever expected, sir. You never know where you're going to go on this show going into it, that's for sure. So what I wanted to go over today, uh, first off, I want to apologize. I know I'm a little bit behind on my YouTube videos right now to all of our listeners. Uh, but the reason for that is, is that, as you can probably tell by my voice, it's not the greatest right now. So um kind of wait until I fully recover to get caught up on those. And it's kind of been a problem recently, but I think I should be good soon. So please stay tuned. But anyway, what I want to talk about today is how dividends can actually affect the pricing of an option. Now, we talked about Greeks last week, Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, Rho. And that, typically, that does cover five of the six factors of option pricing, but does not cover how a dividend can, can affect the price of a stock. So, or I'm sorry, the price of an option. So let's say that we have a stock, and let's say that the stock pays no dividend. Well, in theory, the at the money call and the at the money put would be pretty much the same. And the reason I say pretty much is that in the near term, it probably would be almost exactly the same. In a longer term, at the money call and at the money put, the, the put would be slightly Sorry about that. The put would be slightly less expensive than the call because of the fact that you can get release, meaning that if you actually sell a put, you don't have as much of a maintenance requirement on it. And depending on your broker, you don't have to put down the full 100% of the value of the underlying. You could have some of it in a government treasury earning a little bit more. Now, once again, even though interest rates have gone up over the course of the last couple of months, interest rates still are not a major factor in option pricing. So how does that work with dividends? Well, let's say that a stock does pay a dividend. Well, if that's the case, then the call will typically be priced less than the put. The at the money call will be priced less than the at the money put. <coughs> Excuse me. And the reason is that if you sell a covered call, that premium is yours to keep now, always, and forever. You just have to take on the obligation of selling the stock if called upon to do so. Now, the same holds true with a put. That premium is yours now, always, and forever, but you just have to be obligated to buy the stock if called upon to do so. 
And so by doing that, let's say that the option is priced at a dollar. The one dollar, uh, the put option is priced at one dollar. And normally the call option would be priced at a dollar. But let's say that there's a 50 cent dividend coming out. Usually the call price is going to be priced 50 cents less. Maybe not exactly 50 cents less uh, because of the fact that the dividend is not guaranteed, but it's going to be priced less because of the fact that if you were to create a synthetic, meaning that if you're selling a covered call, it's the same thing as selling a cash secured put. And so by selling a covered call in a dividend paying stock, the dividend would provide some of the income that selling the put would instead of selling a covered call. So in other words, if you just sell a put on a dividend paying stock, the premium that you're collecting on selling that put is going to be partly due to the fact that the stock pays a dividend. And so because of that, you won't collect the dividend if you're just selling the put. Whereas if you own the covered call, you will get the dividend, assuming you don't get called away before X dim date. We'll talk about this in greater detail on my YouTube video, but this is something that you do need to be aware of when selling puts and selling covered calls because of the fact that if you don't have an understanding of how the synthetics work, where you could get potential income from, you may be missing out on some potential opportunities. So with that, make sure you have an understanding of the dividend and how it affects the pricing of the options. And that's the strategy block for today. All right, we'll give Uncle Mike's voice a rest ever so briefly as we head on into Around the Block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what the heck we're keeping an eye on for the rest of this week until we get back here together on Thursday. Also give you a check-in on our question of the week. This went live before showtime, and we're asking you right now, hey, you know, we're back in the red in a SPY and SPX this week, so how are you positioning in your broad market portfolio right now? I'll give you four choices. Folks are always already writing in with what they want for additional write-ins. That's the way of these polls. You only give us four choices, four options, listeners, on Twitter. So we got to work within the constraints of the system. Uh, we gave you still long Spire SPX, so you're kind of hanging out there riding the storm. Uh, you're long Spire SPX, but you got to put or some other hedge on. Or you're in cash right now, and you're waiting to BTFD. You're waiting for that pop so you could dive back in. Or you're just you're in or you're moving to crypto right now. Those are your four choices. Uh, let's go to the Rock Lobster first. Uh, what do you think? Or what is your vote? What do you think our audience is voting for? And what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of the week, sir? So my, um, hmm, I, I don't, uh, that's a, that's a good one. I, I, I think we're, uh, to be, I, th I think we're just going to be oscillating until the fed speaks. So I don't know if that's one of the choices. I'm so. going to put you down for your all in on crypto. That's what I'm going to put you in on. Uh, now I, you know what I'll, okay. I'll say, um, I, I am still, uh, well, I'm going to say a spy put with a hedge. I like that actually spy with a put or other hedge. Okay, and I think that's what I think. Folks though are saying I'm in cash waiting to buy the dip. That's what I think. Interesting. But I like the spy with the put. Um, let's see if uh, uh, Vol uh, if Vix uh, can actually go higher uh, to like the mid 30s, uh, the peak that it did when uh, Putin invaded, uh, and everybody thought that we we're going to have a, uh, you know, what Chernobyl was melting down or something. So uh, interesting to see if that is um, if we can get to that peak again. Uh, because I think the supply chain problems, I just, I just think the, the news is just, the algo, the poor news is just overwhelming. The algos and the market's kind of thin anyway right now, waiting for the Fed to do their latest thing. So that's what I'd be watching to see if we get those numbers uh, up. But, and also we have our big tech earnings. Are they going to be, you know, we got the big, the big guys are coming down. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what that does to the market. The big boys are ready to dance, just like Uncle Mike, sir. If you can muster your voice. One more time, sir. What are you keeping an eye on for this week? And what are you leaning towards in our poll, sir? Well, I'm leaning towards uh, SPY put with a hedge because that's uh, kind of what I'm doing. So I'm going to say that. I'm going to say the audience is doing that as well. 
And in terms of what I'm keeping an eye on the rest of this week, just uh, 4,200 held today. Uh, I'm curious to see if it will hold the rest of the day today, but uh, it did hold for today so far. And uh, watching that and, of course, watching all of the overload of news that we have to digest in this market and seeing also if we stay above 30 by the end of the day today in the VIX, which is exactly where we're at right now. All right, listeners, that music means we're coming to the end. Looking at the numbers right now, again, this is early voting. This just went live. If you want to play along, listeners, if you're listening after the fact on the podcast, you'll have time to vote. This is our question of the week. Go to at options. It should be pinned up there. If it's not, just scroll down a little bit. We have a lot of tweets that go out throughout the day, obviously, of all the shows that we're doing. Uh, right now, it's a tie with almost 39% each for Still Long Spy SPX and you're in cash waiting to buy the dip. So those two are tied 39%. We got 22% for a long spy, but with the put or some other hedge. So far, 0% for you're in or moving to crypto. So uh, <laughs> the folks at our next show may not like that. By the way, if you want more in your ear holes, stay tuned. All you cool kids in Secret Club, you'll be getting the crypto rundown live. in a little bit after this show, uh, we have our guest joining us, Chris Brady. He's the author of The Bitcoin Bride. In the crypto hot seat, we'll find out what all that's about and a whole bunch more. The world of vol and skew and all that other goodness in the crypto and ETH and everything else uh, crypto. So stay tuned for that. Podcast, folks, you got to wait till it hits the network. And let's go around the horn. Let's start with the uncle of Mike's before his voice collapses. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, where can folks go if they want to learn more and see more of your tardy YouTube videos? Ah, go to YouTube, type in St. Charles Wealth Management. Feel free to follow me on Twitter as well, at Mike Tucson. If you're looking for a financial advisor who does have a good voice typically, uh, but who works in the options world, uh, feel free to check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. Oh, and final check-in, listeners. The market's all still red. NASDAQ ever so slightly red on the day. Everything else still pretty much close to where we left it. And yeah, no joy on my puts. I am still uh, a dime bid. No love there. Sounds like a lot of our chat working all those bids as well. It's a race. Who will get filled first? And Mr. Meatball, I apologize. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, if folks want to get all those sweet, sweet discounts by whispering sweet nothings to Ted, where should they go? What should they do? Yes, 888-TRADE-01. Also, Tuesday evening, I am going to unveil the secrets to sustainable trading. So the one-hour webinar, it's free. You go to optionpit.com and sign up. Um... And like, learn some secrets how to how to trade uh, uh, trade for long term. Hit hit risk management is part of the game. So sustainable training is trading is that like powered by solar powered and renewable biofuels? Is that how you trade? Exactly. It's a different kind of sustainable. Oh, training. okay, I see what it's you. It's different get. kind of. I get you now. Yes. I get you. So check it out. You want to know what the heck he's talking about? Optionpit.com and hit up Ted. Remember, don't tell him any lies. You know, the only thing you could tell him to get the true real discount. In the land of the pit, that Mark Longo, the sexiest man in options. None of this Andrew nonsense. Optionpit.com is the place to go for those discounts. we got to get on out of here. Secret Club folks, hang out. We'll pump some fun stuff in there. We'll be back in a little while for the Crypto Rundown. Back again tomorrow. Another great pro Q&A for all you cool cats and kittens in the Secret Club. And we're back after that. I do believe we have the Oracle of New Hampshire joining us for our... Now we've checked in a couple of times with him recently for the advisor's option coming up again tomorrow. If you want to deep dive into earnings vol, go live with us for that. The Secret Club folks will get that live. Everybody else has got to wait till that hits the network out there. But that's a fun one. Always fun to dive deep into the heart of earnings season with the guy who crunches all the numbers for us. And back again on Wednesday for Boot Camp. Dan's finally back in the country. I'm not doing any panels or conferences this week, so we're back live with Boot Camp. By the way, I'm working on trying to get that panel session for you folks over there on the network. Should be fun. And then, of course, OPR with Mr. Overby on Wednesday. Then back again on Thursday, episode two of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. 
Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 